I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Welcome to Single Shot at Manhattan uh, Neighborhood Network Roundtable. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what creates the future. It's no secret that future is created every day and uh, in order to create it, uh, people need to uh, do some specific things. And one of these people who creates future of photography, a visionary who actually believes in uh, giving uh, an opportunity to the young artists to present their work and to show it to the world is Brian Klump. Hello, Brian. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, as I understand, your gallery is uh, a place where young and very talented uh, individuals can have a place to actually start their artistic career. Well, maybe not start from the very beginning, but make those first steps that define in the artist, both artistically and uh, career-wise, right? Right, yeah. Um, our gallery does specialize in emerging and mid-career artists. So there are a lot of artists um, who are just beginning to exhibit their work in a, you know, in a public forum um, that we highlight both in group exhibitions and solo exhibitions. Oh, and uh, as I understand, uh, your gallery is focused on photography specifically, so this is uh, the artists uh, who are working with photography, right? Well, that's an important point that we may get into more later. Um, our gallery definitely specializes in photography, but we also, um, you know, touch into painting and video work. and. Um, as we're seeing with a lot of younger artists these days, they're usually working in a variety of media. Um, so they may be primarily a photographer, but you know, other uh, other media come into their practice for sure. So, uh, what uh, is uh, the principles on which you are actually defining your choice of uh, artists that you uh, bring in a gallery? I mean, there are a huge number of factors um, that I consider when I'm considering new artists for exhibition mm -hmm. and representation at the gallery. Um, honestly, first and foremost, it's whether or not I personally respond to the work. Um, you know, it's got to be work that that speaks to me personally. Um, you know, that I respect, um, that I enjoy. Um, and then once we get past that hurdle, then there are a lot of other things to consider. Um, how the work relates to uh, other, to work by other artists that we already represent. Um, how they're contributing to, you know, the continuum of the history of the medium. Um, you know, uh, the artists, uh, you know, the artist himself, um, how they speak about their work. Um, do they speak intelligently about their work? Um, are they someone that I would be able to, that I'd feel comfortable, you know, putting face to face with, um, with critics and clients and the press? Um, you know, do they understand the relationship of their work to other art? artists in the history of the medium and are they doing something innovative and you know m moving forward well uh, talking about uh, being part of the continuum of the media because mm -hmm. this is essentially what defines not only what happened and what is happening now but what is the future what uh, is uh, your vision on what will be uh, the projection of uh, photographic media in the future. I mean, uh, you selecting the artist with uh, a great uh, part of, being th with this being a great part of uh, your selection process, so what do you, what is your understanding of what will happen next? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's dangerous overgeneralizing uh, things like art, of course. Um, 
But one thing that's been very apparent um, over the past decade, certainly, is um, is artists uh, engaging in many different media um, to get across their message. So even if they're a photographer and maybe most comfortable with the camera, um, they m may be incorporating text into their work or, or video elements or um, you know, uh, presenting their photographs in a sort of sculptural context, a 3D context or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing artists, um, uh, yeah, just really get further and further away from just a sort of, you know, printed photograph, a two-dimensional sheet. Well, it's uh, quite an orthodox approach, and I personally do believe that this is a direction uh, photography should be taking. So. Uh, to add to this, uh, I do believe that uh, not just AP standards and Magnum standards of photography uh, is something we should be looking at. Uh, they're not just presenting the picture and the whole entourage, but the image itself can be uh, furthering from reality, just like painting at some point uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> stopped being exclusively realistic and gave us Impressionism, Expressionism, and all beautiful genres right. we're enjoying right now. So uh, my understanding is that photography, in fact, is moving into this direction, and technology does help. Yeah, and I think one thing to note also, I would agree with you, mm. but um, but looking back to the history of photography, you know, the photo secessionists in the early 20th century um, were maybe moving away from the indexical photograph trying to uh, just the documentary photograph just trying to capture what was in front of the lens so there's always been experimentation oh, but absolutely. but um but you're right with technology and certainly with um digital technologies in particular yeah there it does afford artists the opportunity to be able to experiment in ways they hadn't been able to previously oh, and uh, as we mentioned before the uh, reproduction mediums are also growing bigger. What is your favorite uh, of the new ones that emerged recently? Uh, of the new... Mediums uh, that you can use to reproduce the work. Because there are so many uh, options right now. If you would compare what we had 10 years ago with what we compare right now, it's like two different worlds. Right, so are you thinking of like different ways to print the work? Or to print or and present, present the it, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. It, it, it's all changing so quickly as well. It's um, it's a job in and of itself, just staying on top of all the the new papers that come out and the, you know, the the different substances that you can print on. You know that now there are these prints on metal that are very durable that don't require glazing on top of them when they're mm -hmm. framed, so you're not contending with reflection. Um, yeah, so they're. There are so many different things to think about. But another interesting thing, too, is um, some artists, uh, you know, in the face of all this technology, kind of turning back to the early parts of the medium and going back to traditional techniques like salt prints or cyanotypes and things like that, and oh, then reinterpreting awesome. them and changing them again. So it's not, you know, just a rehashing of something that's yeah. already been done. It's the whole yeah. process, yeah. yeah. And again, the new technology gives a lot uh, of what you can do with the old process as well. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't planning to uh, go into this direction, but uh, you mentioned that uh, you also have some video work presented in your gallery. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is uh, the relationship of uh, intangible art media with uh, the physical art world. I probably would sound a little cynical, but uh, how it's uh, working in terms of uh, commercial side of uh, presenting art. Yeah, so are you talking about the um, the selling of video work yeah. and how that works? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the art world is still figuring a lot of that out. Um, certainly, there are some huge and very successful video artists that have been around for, you know, 15 or 20 years. But um, but I think there's still, uh, certainly dealers are still figuring out how to, um, yeah, how to sell those things, I um, how to addition them, um, how to deliver them to the clients. And then there's the, um, you know, the challenge of storage. Like, 
uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know you might receive a DVD with the artwork on it, but mm -hmm. now that technology is sort of irrelevant. So how do you stay on top of all of those changes? Um, I think of like Nam June Paik, the the video artist from you know um, you know decades ago, um, whose sculptures you know require specialists to to be able to repair them so that they can still you know yes. uh, be be played and presented to the public. So those are all new challenges and and actually maybe new opportunities for for people in the arts industry oh, too. It's definitely the most. Uh, evolving part of the whole scope of the industry at the moment mm -hmm. but uh, it, it's just uh, interesting how this re uh, relates to brick and mortar ga mortar galleries because mm -hmm. uh, there is a process that was established i don't know since 19th century you come to a gallery you like something you look at the price tag you take it home yeah and this is completely different approach and different process uh, it's not just some galleries are going completely online, but uh, also the artwork is doing it in a way. Yeah, exactly. And again, um, that is another another thing to think about in the history of the medium is that um, you know there were artists, surreal artists, you know, in the early 20th century who were experimenting with that idea of buying a product and taking it home um, well, and supporting that. You know? We'll get back to this uh, after the break. Hello, Alex A.G. from Single Shot is here with uh, yet another single trick. Today I want to tell you about front aperture. Uh, everybody for some reason believes that aperture has to be in the middle of the lens and I did so also. But uh, at one point I've seen on eBay lenses that was actually made with aperture in front of them for conspicuously and I started to look into it and indeed you can have a lens that works just like this basically have it right in front of it and it doesn't affect the way photograph is uh, appearing. It's a little bit counterintuitive but uh, that's actually the truth. But uh, what is useful about it? If you have a piece of paper with shape in it, you can put it in front of the lens and your highlights will be right in the shape of what this piece of paper is. Single trick, watch us on YouTube. Okay, since we uh, was talking about the commercial side of photography, let's talk a little bit about the present, about uh, the artist who is starting his career or in the very beginning of his career. And uh, he don't just want to succeed artistically, but also succeed commercially. Uh, as one of the highest professionals in New York in uh, the area of marketing art, what would be your advice uh, for individuals who are in this situation? Assuming that they do have talent and they do have something mm -hmm. to show to the world, because otherwise the answer is obvious. Right. Um, I mean, if they are lucky enough to be somewhere in the New York area or have access to the New York area, my advice would be just to get out on foot and s look at as many galleries as possible. Um, for emerging artists, the Lower East Side is a really great place to um, to begin. Um, but there are still a good number of galleries in Chelsea as well um, that deal with younger artists that would be worth checking out. The value of that is um, being able to see the physical space where the the work is shown, get an idea of how big the gallery is, you know, what size works they can even accommodate. Mm -hmm. um, but you get a very good um, idea of the flavor of the gallery and the kind of work they specialize in. Um, and when you're out doing your research, that's not the time to approach the gallerist. It's the time to just gather information and do research. You can do some of the same research at art fairs and things like that mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I think being able to see the the space, you know, the gallery space itself is, is very valuable. Then when you go back to your studio or your home, uh, then you can start looking at people's websites um, and getting a better idea of, you know, what other artists they represent, where they are in their career fit into that landscape. Um, one thing that people often don't think of, um, and it's kind of common sense, uh, is 
approach galleries who show work that you respect and you like. Um, if you like what they're showing, then it's more likely that you know you're going to share some sort of aesthetic with the person making decisions at the gallery, and um, that they might appreciate you know what you're doing. Wow. Sounds like a mix between dating and the job search. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, I do equate you know representing artists um, and entering into that relationship like a marriage you know there's uh, a lot of time mm. to be spent with each other hopefully a lot of, of years with one another um, you know and a lot of decisions to be made so um, yeah so mm. it should be taken seriously mm. with a lot of it is thought. pretty deep approach I never looked at it this way yeah, but yeah. Uh, talking about places where I was exhibited especially on a regular basis it definitely in a way sounds like this mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> how about a uh, couple of uh, newly emerged phenomena one of them is all those online competitions basically they accepting people to uh, bid on uh, places in their shows to yeah. win in those and uh, they're asking for reasonably small amount of money and the winner is uh, joining them in some kind of uh, uh, higher tier shows and uh, in uh, the gallery presentation do you think it uh, it's helpful do you think it actually looks good on the artist's resume or it's just useless for them? Uh, I think, again, um, there really needs to be research there. Research um, the organization, you know, that's that's doing the competition. Um, research past winners and what's happened with their careers, you know, mm. since, um, you good. know, since they won. Um, because there are so many, uh, there's endless places to, to throw your money at. Um, so you really want to make it matter. If there is a juror, research the juror. Is this someone who would even like your work? Um, is it someone that it's worth your time and effort putting your work in front of? Do you think reasonably that they could do something for your career if you know your work really does stand out to them? Um, yeah, so I think you need to be strategic about it, um, and certainly if it's at if it's at respectable venues, um, you know, and it's a a competition with a good reputation, then yes, that is a good thing to have on your CV and something, um, you know, that can help you know push your career um, into the future. Um, yeah, but again, be careful because I think artists get taken advantage of a lot as well. Well, that's yeah. what it sounds most of the time when I'm seeing something uh, like this. But definitely, there are some legitimate ones that yeah. are famous enough to be known by the whole world. Well, uh, it's uh, actually a great advice, and uh, it sounds like uh, every step that artists need to take in order to advance their career is actually serious effort besides putting an effort in their art they need to put a lot of effort in their career mm -hmm. which naturally leads us to a very interesting and very simple question uh, the artist evidently need to put a lot of work and a lot of effort from both sides in what they do and uh, in the modern world the competition especially when it comes to photography and especially when it comes to art photography is as steep as probably in, in no other industry media ever existed. So is uh, there anything that artists actually can do to understand whether or not it's worth for him or for her to pursue it? Because you can put literally decades of effort in doing it and end up with having several exhibitions and no sales. Right. I've seen people with whom it happened. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to have some sense of self-awareness and whether or not what you're producing is, you know, is worthwhile. Um, and and that comes from, yeah, not only believing in yourself, but talking to other artists, um, getting feedback from other people. I think that's one thing that a lot of artists um, maybe don't think of is, um, you know, showing your work to as many people as possible is important, but certainly to other artists. And a lot of the opportunities that I give to artists is um, artists that are brought to me by artists that I already represent. Um, they know my taste, um, they know my gallery, and I value their opinions. So that can be a really good strategy. But um, yeah, knowing whether or not, you know, it's worth your time and effort to continue, you know, uh, working very hard. <coughs> um, 
I think it becomes apparent to you sooner than later. An art, you know, an artist who is a true artist, they don't really have any, have any choice in the matter. It's like, well, that's you know, sure. art has already chosen them and they can't imagine a life of not creating. And, um, you know, and so... Yeah, I think that's your answer in a big sense. You Absolutely. Know. It's yeah. actually a pretty comprehensive answer. Mm -hmm. I do know that there is no answer, but uh, mm -hmm. in the end of the day, networking really can uh, be helping them. Even though, again, getting back to my own experience, if you have something in a show, what you hear most of the time is nice things. Oh, yeah. Even yeah. if you're standing and eavesdropping and <laughs> trying to hear what other people are saying, Normally on a show, there would be very few people who actually would be saying something negative, but communicating with your fellow artist, if you walk into somebody badly mannered and uh, honest enough, they can actually give you a valuable feedback. Right, and that's another important point is that to be an artist, you certainly have to have thick skin. You know, you have to be able to, um, wow. yeah, to hear some tough comments. Um, yeah, and, and roll with it and learn from it. So, well, What about the professional critiques? I know that you're actually doing it uh, at your gallery mm -hmm. and uh, individuals are coming, like booking an appointment with you and you uh, explain to them from your experience and your perspective what is happening with that. Yeah, exactly. We do a lot of that. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give 30-minute, uh, you know, appointments to artists where we can have a more in-depth discussion of, you know, mm -hmm. their their portfolio of prints, if, you know, if that's what they're producing. Um, one important thing to note is that they're, you know, our gallery, we, um, we also have online portfolio review guidelines as well. And so, you know, it, it doesn't have to, for someone who lives in Iceland or Norway, you know, they don't yes. necessarily Definitely helpful. We'll talk a little bit more about online uh, art scene after this short break. Hello, this is Alex A.G. from uh, Single Shot with another single trick. Tonight I want to tell you a little bit about post-production. There is one feature in uh, Photoshop and many other photo editing programs that being used uh, scarcely. That's channels. And uh, there is only one reason why it is so. Nobody understands what it is for. Well, not nobody, but a lot of people don't. So when you see an image just like this, uh, you are getting in channel that. And that's very counterintuitive because you actually supposed to be seeing this. Three separate sets of color, not of grayscale. So if you would think of each channel as specific color, for example, of red being red instead of grays, blue being blue instead of uh, grays, and green likewise, you'll uh, find channels very useful for editing. All right, we're back and we have a few minutes left to talk about uh, online life of photography. As I noticed in one of uh, your interviews you was giving before, you actually was mentioning that a lot of galleries, even the ones that used to be brick and mortar, now uh, moving to being just online venue and it works pretty well for them. And uh, you uh, just mentioned that uh, artists can have their works reviewed by very serious authority by just submitting them online. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think this progression is actually something that helps photography? Or it kind of dilutes uh, the field and makes uh, it to be less of the art media and more of a abstract digital right. phenomena. I think it's a double-edged sword. Um, the value of having a physical space um, where you can 
have an exhibition and present a solo show of your work to really get across the full spectrum of your ideas is very valuable. But having the digital world open up, um, you know, for the art world allows a greater number of artists to have their voices heard um, and perhaps sell their works as well. Um, so, yeah, so pluses well, and minuses. Well, the biggest minus, in my opinion, that along, along with a lot of talented individuals which otherwise would be just sitting in their corner of the world and photographing just for themselves and their family, we have tons and tons of white noise that actually shadows those individuals who otherwise would have better opportunity to promote, uh, to be promoted and uh, become more famous. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, not bad photographers, but uh, mediocre photographers posting so much content and presenting so much content that uh, the outstanding works actually being kind of less uh, possible to be noticed. I would agree with you and Instagram having a maybe a, a general public you know voting on the value of art through their likes, you know, isn't necessarily a good thing. <laughs> well, that's actually a completely different phenomena mm -hmm. that uh, at, uh, to, to a degree, a reward in uh, photography as a media was replaced for from monetary reward with reward with just approval of those likes. A mm -hmm. lot of photographers not even trying to build a career, they just trying to collect as many of those likes, which is the most abstract thing ever. Right. If you think about it, and the most random as well. <laughs> Well, let's hope that the future of photography will be bright and uh, we will figure all this out from how the videos can be actually sold as a tangible item to how to deal with social media and abundance of artists. Great. Thank you very much, Brian. It was yeah. uh, great seeing you and thank you for so much uh, valuable advice. Hopefully, a lot of the artists you're reviewing this year will become our future Picassos of photography. <laughs> thank you. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.